What is going on NFL fans? Welcome back to the channel. In today's episode, I'm going to do some 2024 predictions for you and I'm going to start doing a series where we go through each division and talk about all the games in each division. This particular division, we're going to start with the NFC East. So we're going to go over the Eagles game, the Giants game, the Cowboys game, and the Commanders game, right? First, let's talk about the Green Bay Packers versus the Philadelphia Eagles. No home games here. This game is happening in Brazil. The Green Bay Packers went 9-8 and eight last year, scored 383 points, allowed 350 you know, pretty much top 10 in both those categories, guys. A really good football team. A very young football team led by Matt LaFleur. They have a new defensive coordinator, Boston College former head coach Jeff Halfley. So we'll see how he implements his scheme into this Green Bay Packers organization. They added running back Josh Jacob in free agency. Aaron Jones walked. And they also added safety Paid him huge money, Xavier McKinney. The draft was really good for the Green Bay Packers, guys. They added Arizona tackle Jordan Morgan. He was playing left guard in OTA, so we'll see where he ends up when the season starts. Center seems to be their weakest point on the offensive line. They added Edger and Cooper, the inside linebacker, and safety Javon Bullard, and then running back from USC, Marshawn Lloyd, who I think has a lot of of talent. This is a really, really good football team. All the wide receivers are 25 years and younger, right? Their best player, in my opinion, is Jair Alexander, the cornerback. He's a really, really good player, and Rashawn Gary had 10 sacks last year. Really, really good. They're shifting to a 4-3 defense. It's more of like a press man type of scheme. All right, now let's move on to the Philadelphia Eagles. 11-6 and six last year. After that 10-1 and one start, that wheels really, really fell off. Points allowed, 428 comes in 30th, right? Not so good for the Philadelphia Eagles. But they got new coordinators. Brian Johnson is out at OC. And we're bringing in Vic Fangio from the Dolphins to coach the defense. We'll see. This is probably Nick Sirianni's last shot at head coach. If he does not... Have the Eagles turn it around from that horrible, disastrous second half. Nick Sirianni is going to be out in Philadelphia. The Philadelphia Eagles also had a really good draft, guys. Quinion Mitchell in round one. Cooper DeGene, they traded up to get him in round two. Cooper DeGene was kind of playing in the slot and safety a little bit in OTA. So we'll see how he fits into this defense. They really have an opening at cornerback position opposite of Darius Slay. Bradbury was terrible last year. I don't think he's going to start. And it looks like Isaiah Rodgers has a really good chance to kind of take that role. But Quinion Mitchell and him could compete and see who wins the starting job at cornerback. Then in the third round, Jalex Hunt. He's kind of a project guy. And then running back Will Shipley. He's got really good hands out of the backfield. And they did a really good job in the later rounds. Anaya Smith, really good wide receiver from Texas A&M, could play the slot. They have an opening at the third wide receiver position. Jeremiah Trotter Jr. comes in to maybe fill a role at the linebacker position. And they also got Trevor Keegan, offensive guard from the national champion Michigan Wolverines. And a sleeper guy is this Johnny Wilson receiver from Florida State. Big, tall, got a solid catch point, really, really good player. Let's take a look at how these depth charts match up and see where these teams can kind of find an advantage. I think for the Philadelphia Eagles defense, that D-line needs to come to play because let's call a spade a spade. The Green Bay Packers offensive line is not great. Losing John Runyon on the inside is a big loss for them. So the Right now, they have some guys penciled in that don't have a ton of experience and aren't necessarily great players. But with Watson and Dobbs and Reed, this, this wide receiver crew is really, really good. And right now, the Eagles, I don't know what they're going to do at cornerback. We'll see if Mitchell works his way in, but Cooper DeGene could be in the slot. It looks like Isaiah Rodgers, they think he's going to be the starting outside cornerback. Then we have Reed Blankership and Gardner Johnson at the safety position. The Eagles are really, really not good at the linebacker position. So they want to attack them in the middle of the field in that second and third levels for sure. It's going to be really interesting to see if Jalen Carter can disrupt Jordan Love, get him off his spot, 
and make some plays, get some sacks. It should be really, really fun game. This is going to be one of my favorite games of the week. Let's move on to the other side of the ball. Xavier McKinney is a huge audition at the safety position, and Javon Buller is one of my favorite players in this draft. Really big upgrade, and it looks like Edger and Cooper is probably going to start at the inside linebacker position. He was probably my favorite defensive player that I scouted this past year. With Jair Alexander on the outside, he's probably going to man up A.J. Brown. So that leaves a guy like Devontae Smith and Dallas Goddard that could really work the middle of the field and try to find some openings. The Eagles have a very good offensive line with Mylotta and Johnson. The tackle is probably the best tackle tandem in the NFL. And don't forget about Saquon Barkley, a big offseason addition for the Philadelphia Eagles. I think the Eagles could probably put some points up against this defense. The Green Bay Packers defense is just slightly above average in my opinion. They're not a great defense, but they're not a bad defense by any stretch of the imagination. And adding a guy like Xavier McKinney is going to be huge for the Green Bay Packers. So, who do I ultimately think wins this game? I think it's going to be really close. But until the Eagles prove otherwise, that disastrous second half last year leaves a really bad taste in my mouth. And I look for Jordan Love and the Green Bay Packers to win a close game 23-20. to If you guys like these NFL predictions and breakdowns, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. The next game I want to talk about is a fun one, the Dallas Cowboys playing the Cleveland Browns. This should be a lot of fun. But for Cowboys fans, that offensive line is looking really suspect. 12-5 and last year. They won the NFC East. 509 point score. Absolutely incredible. They only gave up 315. The Cowboys still have a pretty solid defense, in my opinion. The Browns, however, are also a really good football team. 11 and 6 last year. 396 points scored and only gave up 362 points. That's good for 13th. Really, really interesting off seasons for these guys. The Cleveland Browns are led by head coach Kevin Stefanski. GM Andrew Barry. They have a new offensive coordinator, Ken Dorsey, who was fired by the Buffalo Bills midseason last year. I don't like this. I don't really like this move per se, but he did have a lot of success working with Josh Allen. That run game was an absolute disaster, though. And they have a guy like Nick Chubb, so I don't know how Nick Chubb, whenever he is healthy, because they don't know if he's going to be ready to start the season, right? So he's kind of like up in the air. That return is very uncertain. We don't have any word yet. He wasn't put on the pup list, physically unable to perform list. So, I mean, we don't really know what's happening with Nick Chubb. Amari Cooper is in the final year of this deal. He wants to get paid again. Will he hold out? He had back-to-back 1,000-yard seasons. They also had an okay draft, right? They didn't really have a lot of early picks. They drafted Michael Hall from Ohio State, the D-tackle, in round two. Zach Zinter, the offensive guard from Michigan, in round three. And not much else to write home about. One of the big losses for the Cleveland Browns this year is losing offensive line coach, offensive line guru, Bill Callahan, who went to coach with his son, the new head coach of the Tennessee Titans. Deshaun Watson's coming off that shoulder surgery, so who knows what is going to happen. But that defense with Miles Garrett and still led by Jim Schwartz is one of the best defensive line units in the entire NFL. Now, let's talk about the Cowboys a little bit more. Mike McCarthy might be on the hot seat, guys, but they brought in new defensive coordinator Mike Zimmer, the former Minnesota Vikings head coach. He used, he started out his career as a D-backs coach, so he's really going to like focus on this unit. He loves press man, a lot of simulated pressures. He loves bump and run on the outside. So he really is going to use his corners 
to help that D-line get to the quarterback, right? They lost Tony Pollard and Tyron Smith and Leighton Vander Esch retired. Some big losses. They also lost center Tyler Biatze. That's a big, big loss. The offensive line is a serious issue. Zach Martin's getting older too. Two, at least two rookies are probably going to be starting. Brandon Cooks is also getting older. And then their running back room might be the worst running back room in the entire NFL. Zeke is the number one guy. And at this point in his career, he's not the Zeke from five years ago. He has regressed considerably. But the defense looks great on paper, led by Micah Parsons and Demarcus Lawrence. I love this unit. And the cornerbacks are great, too. Trevon Diggs coming off that injury and Deron Bland. They had a good draft, too, bringing in offensive tackle, Tyler Guyton from Oklahoma. It doesn't have a lot of experience playing in college. He's a little raw. They also drafted Marshawn Nealon, the edge defender. And then they brought in a guy I really, really liked, Cooper Beebe from Kansas State. He could play guard or center position. And they also another pick I really liked was the linebacker Maurice Luafo from Notre Dame. Let's break down the depth charts for these teams and see how they kind of match up. I just really do not like this offensive line for the Dallas Cowboys. And offensively, I like Ferguson, the tight end. But the running back position, like I said before, is really suspect. Cooks is getting older and older and older. And then CeeDee Lamb is the truth, right? He's one of the best wide receivers in the game. And I'm actually a really big fan of Dak Prescott. I think he's an excellent quarterback, but I think he's going to be running for his life, especially with Garrett and Smith and Harris breathing down his neck. They got excellent linebackers too, and one of my favorite cornerbacks in the NFL, Denzel Ward. So I think the Cleveland Browns have a clear-cut advantage from the defensive side of the ball over the Dallas Cowboys offense. Now, when we flip the script, we got Dallas on defense, who I think also has a huge advantage over this Cleveland Browns offense. I mean, Hooker and Bland and Diggs and Lawrence and Parsons, man. The defense for the Cowboys should be really good. Look at all these high 80s, 70s, 90 grades. The Dallas Cowboys defense is for real, guys. Do not forget about that. But they're bringing in a new system offensively. The Cleveland Browns are. I like their offensive line, especially the right side to it. Very good offensive line, I think. And learning all they did from Coach Callahan last year is going to pay dividends as this team moves forward. Cooper has those back-to-back. 1,000-yard seasons. They brought in Jerry Judy from the Denver Broncos, who's really good. And we'll see if Nick Chubb is ready to play. If he does not play in this game, I might change my pick. But we'll have to see how that plays out this offseason. Right now, I think the Cleveland Browns are going to win a really close game. I think this is going to be a slow-scoring I think this is going to be a low-scoring kind of grind them out game. So I right now, with Nick Chubb penciled in the start, I like Cleveland to win this game 21-17. But if Chubb doesn't play, I think the Cowboys have a chance to shut down Cleveland's offense and steal a victory on the road here, guys. But right now, I'm going with the Cleveland Browns, 21-17. We're halfway through these predictions of the AFC East games. If you like this content, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Next, we have the Washington Commanders on the road traveling to Tampa Bay to take on the Buccaneers. From a betting perspective, this is my favorite game to bet on right now. The spread actually went from 3.5 to 4 points. I made a video and told you guys to get in on that line. Tampa Bay at minus 3.5 was an absolute steal. I still think they're a steal at minus 4 points. Let's talk about these Washington Commanders, guys. New head coach Dan Quinn comes over from Dallas, the former defensive coordinator there. They have new ownership. They also brought in a new offensive coordinator, Cliff Kingsbury, who I do like, the former head coach of the Arizona Cardinals. They also also have a new defensive coordinator, Joe Witt Jr., the former Dallas Cowboys secondary coach. I really like the commander's draft. They got Jaden Daniels, of course, who's going to be the rookie starting quarterback. 
The second pick was Johnny Newton, the D tackle, big bulky guy. And then they also had another second round pick from Michigan. The corner they took Mike Sandrastrill, a very good, talented player. I think he's more of a slot guy at the NFL. We'll have to see how that works out. Then Ben Sanat, the tight end from Kansas State, who's probably going to split time with Zach Ertz. They also drafted Brandon Coleman from TCU, the offensive guard, and Christian McCaffrey's brother in the third round, Luke McCaffrey, who is a wide receiver, right? They gave up a lot of points last year, 518, and I think this defense is actually going to be worse in 2024 than they were last year. Big losses on defense. They cleared out Chase Young and Montez Sweat, and they also lost safety Cameron Curl and cornerback Kendall Fuller. Oh my gosh. What is the GM of the Commanders doing to let these guys walk away? They brought in Austin Eckler and an aging Bobby Wagner to play linebacker. Yikes, man. This GM, you give me the GM job because this Commanders GM is an abomination, guys. I do like the wide receivers. Terry McLaurin and Jahan Dotson, I think, are both talented guys, even though Jahan Dotson has kind of underperformed in his NFL career so far. All right, now let's move on to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. 9-8 and eight last year, 348 points scored, and they only allowed 325. Todd Bowles' defenses are always really, really tough. They made the playoffs last year. Where they blew out the Eagles and lost a close game to the Detroit Lions. Pretty much the entire team is coming back. They didn't do a lot this offseason. They just kind of brought back players and re-sign their own players, right? They had a pretty decent draft, though. Graham Barton, the center from Duke, he can play guard as well. I really like that pick. They got the linebacker Braswell from Alabama, Taki Smith, the safety from Georgia, and Jalen McMillan, the wide receiver from Washington, who played opposite of Roma Dunze. So what is going on with this Tampa Bay team? Can they make a run? with Baker Mayfield and Mike Evans, who's back on a two-year deal. They did lose Devin White, who significantly underperformed last year, who got benched. He looked really good in the previous year, but he did not play good at all. He's now with the Philadelphia Eagles. They have a new offensive coordinator, Dave Canales. Their old one left to be the head coach of Carolina. The new OC's name is Liam Cohen. So we'll see how his scheme fits in Tampa Bay. I feel like Baker Mayfield can't catch a break. He's always getting new offensive coordinators. I do like their running back, Rashad White. He needs to improve on the 3.6 yards per carry that he had last year, but he's a workhorse. He can catch the ball out of the backfield. Caught 64 balls, 549 yards. Man, they have big questions at cornerback. So, I do like Tampa Bay to win this game. I don't know if they go on the playoff run that they went last year. I think the Falcons are going to surprise some people and win the NFC South. Let's take a look at this depth chart. We're going to start with Tampa Bay on offense and the Commanders on defense. Both of these lines are not very good at all. I have huge concerns for the offensive line other than the tackle spots. The inside offensive line for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers leaves a lot to be desired, guys. But Wirfs is one of the best tackles in the entire NFL. He is extremely, extremely talented, as you can see by that 83.5 PFF grade. Godaki is really good as well. Baker Mayfield had a great year last year, 77.2 grade, and White was just okay. I want to see him average over four yards per carry this year. And then they got Evans and Godwin on the outside. It's a very good tandem, man. They could go on a run, but we're going to have to see how the interior parts of this offensive line plays over the course of the season. Taking a look at the defense for the Commanders. Jesus, mother of God. Their best player is Bobby Wagner, who's 487 years old. But the corners and the safeties, one guy with a 61 grade, everyone else is below a 61. Extremely, extremely concerning, right? The defensive line minus Armstrong is pretty trash as well. I like Tampa Bay in this spot. Now let's flip it over. Look at this Tampa Bay defense, who I like. I do like Dean, the corner there. And they got Levante David, who's been a very solid player. Winfield Jr. is one of the best safeties in the NFL. But Todd Bowles will get these players in the right positions. Coaching is really important on defense to get the most out of the guys you do have. But if you look at the Washington Commanders offensive line, it's serviceable. 
But Zacchaeus and Ertz, slot tight end players, not very good. Jahan Dotson has definitely underperformed. They pretty much only have one weapon on the outside with Terry McLaurin. And Austin Eckler was not very good with the Chargers last year and a rookie quarterback. Especially one that moves a lot. That's really tough for offensive linemen when you have a very mobile quarterback and you don't know where he's going to be. You don't know what spot he's moving off to. They have to get used to playing with Jaden Daniels, and that's going to take some time. That's why I love the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to blow the brakes off of this commander's team. 27-10. Tampa Bay Buccaneers look great in week one. If you're still with me, you are a true NFL maniac. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Don't forget to smash the crap out of that like button. We appreciate each and every one of you guys. Minnesota Vikings on the road playing the New York football giants. Interesting offseason for the Minnesota Vikings, letting Kirk Cousins walk in free agency. We also saw Marcus Davenport, KJ Osborne, Dodge, Josh Dobbs, Jordan Hicks, Daniil Hunter, and DJ Wanham hit the road for greener pastures, but they replace one of their best players on the line, Daniil Hunter, with a guy who's really good as well. Not quite as good, but Jonathan Grenard is a very, very talented player. They also added Sam Darnold, the quarterback who looks to be getting the nod week one over rookie J.J. McCarthy. We'll see how camp plays out to see if that's the case. They also added guard Dalton Reisner, Linebacker Blake Cashman and edge defender outside linebacker Andrew Van Genko, who was really, really good for the Dolphins last year. I do like this team, right? I mean, how could you not like the Minnesota Vikings with that offense led by Jordan Addison and Justin Jefferson? Jordan Addison just got a DUI, though, so he might get suspended as we get closer and closer to week one. We'll have to see how that situation plays out and keep our eyes on it. They scored not so many points last year, 344. That's mainly because of the quarterback play. Kirk Cousins was hurt, and they were bouncing around quarterbacks. The defense was middle of the road, giving up 362 points. They're very well-coached team, excellently coached football teams. Then we move on to the New York football giants, 6-11 last year, scored only 266 points. They lost Saquon Barkley to the Philadelphia Eagles. Yikes. They did bring in Drew Locke, Devin Singletary, Jalen Mills and Jermaine Elliman-Nur is going to play tackle for them. They also added guard John Runyon to help protect Daniel Jones. They need to keep Daniel Jones upright. Losing Xavier McKinney is going to be a huge, huge loss. He got so much money to go to the Packers. See how Daniel Jones plays out. But they had a great draft. The Giants did bring it in. One of my favorite players, the wide receiver, from LSU, Malik Neighbors. They also brought in safety Tyler Newbin in the second round, who in my opinion was probably the best safety out of the bunch. They also went cornerback in the third round, Andrew Phillips, Theo Johnson tight end. With Waller retiring, they needed to bring in a tight end. And I really like Tyron Tracy Jr., the running back from Purdue. I loved him. And I love Darius Massasau from UCLA, who played opposite Laatu Latu, a very unheralded guy because Latu got all the attention, but he's a very good player as well. Real quick, I want to touch on the Vikings draft. Another draft I really like, J.J. McCarthy, obviously round one. They also got Dallas Turner, the edge defender, one of the best edge guys in this draft from Alabama. Kyrie Jackson, the cornerback from Oregon, who unfortunately just passed away in that horrific car wreck. Rest in peace, Mr. Jackson. Super, super sad news. They also got Walter Riles, that offensive tackle from Oklahoma, which I thought was a really, really good pick. Michael Jurgens, the center from Wake Forest, another pick I absolutely loved. Now let's break down the depth charts for these two teams and see where the advantages are. The offensive line for the Giants did get better, adding LMU Neuer and Runyon, who was just okay last year. But the wide receiver position is huge question marks as is the running back position. Devin Singletary is probably going to get the majority of the snaps in the backfield. But I do like the Minnesota Vikings defense, especially the linebackers. The corners are not awesome, and they need some help. 
on the D-line as well. But Grenard and Dallas Turner should be a very formidable tandem. I'm going to give the edge to the Minnesota Vikings here. Like I said before, Sam Darnold is probably going to be the starting quarterback. And they also got Aaron Jones from the Green Bay Packers. I think he's still got some juice left in the tank. Addison and Jefferson on the outside. And TJ Hawkinson is one of my favorite tight ends in the entire league. The inside of this line needs some help, but they have really good tackles in O'Neal and Darisol. Very, very talented. They should be able to keep Sam Darnold upright enough to make some passes down the field. I've been going back and forth on this game. Is Minnesota going to win? Is the Giants going to win? But the more I break down the roster, I just think the New York Giants have a lot of holes, especially at the cornerback positions. How is Banks and Flott? These bum corners are going to cover Jefferson and Addison and Hawkinson. They're not going to be able to do it. I'm going with the Minnesota Vikings 27-17. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning into this video. I did a little podcast style so I can give you guys some more details on these games. If you like the podcast, let me know in the comments below. I appreciate you guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Peace.